Good morning. <laughs> Hopefully you slept in a little bit. That was fun last night, did you think? I thought Rob was really good. I thought, Rob, that was the best show I think he's ever done. I think that, that was awesome. And you all were awesome at the comedy show, so thank you. I started crying. It was so funny. I hope you really enjoyed the speeches, and I hope you got something from the speakers. And today, you know, we tried to stack today with some more superstars, and I'm not talking about myself. We have some really neat people who are about to speak next. So, you know, you really want to just plug in today. And, you know, the idea is just get as much as you can from this. I'm going to talk about stress, and I'm just going to ask you a question. Let's say that you went to an annual conference. Every year you went, okay, and there was a session on stress. Raise your hand if you'd go to that. Okay, now let me ask you another question. Let's say the year before you were at the same conference and there was a session on stress. Raise your hand if you'd go to that. The point is you don't always just go to the stress session. It's fix your stress so that you can move on with some stuff in your life. But what I find with young people a lot, you all are really, really stressed. The problem is you have it pretty easy right now. And as you move on to the real world and the real jobs and things like that, it's just going to become more and more stressful. So the idea is how do you deal with stress now so that when you get your real job, it's not that big of a deal. So I'm going to read you some quotes. This first one's from the Bible. Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to your life? And that's a really good point, right? Worrying in and of itself doesn't add much to your life. If people concentrated on the really important things in life, There'd be a shortage of fishing poles, <laughs> totally, or basketballs, or whatever it is you like to do. Sometimes the most important thing in a whole day is the rest we take between two deep breaths. When was the last time you took a deep breath? When was the last time you just calmed down, took five deep breaths, and thought about your life? No, we're over-programmed. We do too much. And this is my favorite one. The reason why worry kills more people than work is that more people worry than work. <laughs> Would that describe you? I mean, are you consumed by your worry that you can't get anything done? So we're going to talk about that a little bit today. So this is stress. On that picture, you will see two dolphins. If you don't see two dolphins, you're stressed. So I did this once, and a girl raised her hand, and she started to cry. And she goes, I see a cow. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you do? You're the only one? And she started to cry, and I said, it's okay. So hopefully you see a cow, <laughs> right? But this is real stress, okay? This little dog. Ask yourself how your problems compare to that dog's potential problems. This is the dictionary definition of stress. So it's a response by your body to a stimulus, such as fear or pain, that disturbs or interferes with the normal physiological equilibrium of an organism. Let me translate that. When you're stressed in your mind, you know that you're stressed, but your body doesn't know that. Your body thinks you're A, scared, or B, hurt. And your body responds accordingly, right? So it releases all kinds of chemicals. And, and it does that to try to protect you. So in your brain, you get it, but your body doesn't get it. And the best analogy I can make to this is smoking cigarettes. And my wife will tell you the way it works is if, if people would stop smoking cigarettes, she would lose a significant number of her patients. But the idea is when you're 18 years old and smoking cigarettes... It doesn't really matter. It doesn't phase you as much, right? You're 25, 30 years old, you're smoking cigarettes, maybe you're a little short of breath. You're 40, 50 years old, now you're coughing and wheezing. You're 70, 80 years old, you've smoked cigarettes your whole life, you're attached to an oxygen tank and you maybe die of emphysema like my grandpa did. What people say who are dying from cigarettes is, I wish I never would have smoked that first cigarette. The same is true of stress. Right now, you can cope with stress okay because you're young and healthy. And I was fine at your age. But when I was in law school, I pulled so many all-nighters. Right now in my life, I can't stay up all night. If I had to, I couldn't. By like 2, 3 in the morning, my body just goes to sleep. I can't stay up anymore. When I was your age, I could. But I pushed myself so hard that now I can't. Right? I just can't take it as much anymore. So it's like smoking cigarettes. Right now you're fine, but the stress takes its toll. You'll become my age, and then you'll start to get older, and you really, you, your immune system will break down and, and things like that. So before we take this stress test, I want to kind of tell you what stress does to your body. And it involuntarily does this. It increases your heart rate, your metabolism, and your blood flow. It can cause serious illnesses, headaches, backaches, right? Raise your hand if you've lost a night of sleep to stress. And the rest of you are lying, right? We all have. Raise your hand if you've had a headache due to stress. I mean, we all have, right? Over time, that could cripple you. Guess what stress, stress also does that's not good? 
It affects your personal and your professional relationships. And I bet most of the people in this room have lost a relationship or damaged a relationship because you were so stressed that you acted out, right? You said something you wish you wouldn't have said. That's what stress does to us. I have, right? I'll get a, a mean email and I'll immediately write back <laughs> in a snarky way. Stress is causing me to do that. I should just not do that. I should wait. Well, let's take a stress test. Just do this in your mind. I'm going to ask you 20 questions. Each time you answer yes, I want you to give yourself a one. If you answer no, I want you to give yourself a zero, okay? Here's question number one. Do you frequently neglect your diet? Now, frequently is an interesting word, but don't look at me and say, what do you mean, Professor C, by frequently? If you have to ask, give yourself a one. Okay, so this is college. I understand that once in a while you'll eat an entire pizza. <laughs> I'm not saying once in a while do you eat an entire pizza. I'm saying do you frequently neglect your diet? If you do, it's a one. If you don't, it's a zero. Number two, do you frequently try to do everything yourself? And that's what they taught us in law school, right? Everyone's out to get you. Be paranoid. Everyone's out to screw you over. That isn't true. Now, I'll say this to you. I don't believe that most people have your best interests at heart. I don't. But I also don't think most people are out to screw you over. So if you try to do everything yourself, if you micromanage things, that's going to cause a ton of stress. Three, do you frequently blow up easily? Where are my Italians? Automatic one, <laughs> right? We can't help it. It's in my DNA. I'm just stuck. But if you blow up over dumb things, if you blow up really easily, you can see how that would cause stress. If you try to do everything yourself and micromanage people, you can see how that would cause stress. And same is true of if you neglect your diet, right? So just keep adding up these ones. Do you frequently seek unrealistic goals? And I want your goals to be high, right? But I don't want your goals to be unrealistic. When I was a kid, I wanted to be a doctor <laughs> until I took high school physics. That ended my dream. The dream of being a doctor was over for me. Right? That goal was unrealistic. I'm not smart enough to do that. Five, do you frequently fail to see the humor in situations others find funny? Have you ever been in a room and someone tells a stupid joke and half the room laughs and the other half of the room is like, what an idiot that guy is. I'm going to tell you a joke right now and it is stupid. See if you laugh. If you've heard it, don't answer. How do you put an elephant in a refrigerator? Has anyone heard this? Don't answer. How do you put an elephant in a refrigerator? This tests your critical thinking skills. Does anyone know? You've heard it. Don't say it. If you've, heard, yeah, you've heard the joke. You're, you're cheating. You open up the door and you shove it in, right? You could have a big refrigerator. How do you put a rhinoceros in a refrigerator? This tests your memory. <laughs> Anyone know? Open it up, but what do you do? Just tell us. Oh, she's not going to say it now. You take the what? Elephant out. You shove him in. Let's assume the Lion King calls an all animals meeting and all the animals go, except for who? No, the rhinoceros, right? Where, where's the rhinoceros? He's stuck in the fridge. Let's say you want to go to the meeting, but in order to get there, you normally have to cross this river filled with dangerous crocodiles, and you don't have a boat. Can you still cross? Yeah, where are the crocodiles? They're at the meeting. <laughs> give yourself a one. Give yourself a one. One. You're laughing. You're okay. Don't laugh now. You're cheating. Give yourself a one. Let me repeat the question, right? Do you frequently fail to see the humor in situations others find funny? Raise your hand if you found that funny. That's others. And if you didn't, give yourself a one, okay? Six. Do you frequently get easily irritated? Like this front row is at me. Like, what an idiot. Give yourself another one. <laughs> Seven. Do you frequently make a big deal of everything? All right, and that just might as well be college student 101. Y'all come into my office and you're like, you just download. Professor C, did you hear about the blah? <laughs> I, just, I look at you and I'm like, seriously, is that a big deal? No, I just had to tell someone. Or like this ethics boot camp, right? This ethics boot camp is ruining my sophomore year. Is it really? Like a Friday, one Friday and one Saturday, give me a friggin' break. If you consider this to be a big deal, give yourself a one, right? That's silly. Eight, do you frequently complain that you are disorganized? Your purse, your wallet, your stuff, your car, right? That's stressful. Do you frequently keep everything inside? And I'm going to tell you today, I think it'll come out in the wrong way at the wrong time if that's you. Ten, do you frequently neglect exercise? And I'll say this to you. I don't think there'll be, ever be an easier time in your life to exercise than right now in college. It's just going to get way harder when you have to get up at 6 or 7, go to work until 6 or 7, and try to exercise. If you're not exercising now, chances are you won't when you graduate, that, and that can be stressful. Okay, are you all keeping tally? Carry the one. Here we go. 11, do you frequently have few supportive relationships? 
And I talked to you last night about what I believe a relationship to be, right? So how many of those do you have? How many people would rush into your life when no one else wants to be near you? Twelve, do you frequently get too little rest? And, and listen, going to bed at four in the morning and waking up at noon counts as too little rest, okay? Are you on a normalish sleep schedule? There are very few jobs that let you go to bed at four and up at noon. So if you're getting too little rest right now, it's a stressful deal, right? Thirteen, do you frequently get angry when you are kept waiting? So, i.e., are you an impatient person? That's stressful. I always give myself a one on that. Do you frequently ignore stress symptoms? So I asked you, right? I said, raise your hand if you got a headache due to stress. And some of you didn't raise your hand, and that's cool, man. Maybe you're the one out of a millionth person who doesn't. Have you ever lost a night of sleep to stress? Maybe you're, not, maybe you're the one in a million. Or you're ignoring stress symptoms and just popping an Advil. Popping a headache pill, right? Taking NyQuil. Do you frequently put things off until later? This is the broken printer phenomenon, right? The printer always works awesome until y'all have an essay due in my class. And then you come in and say, oh, Professor C, I couldn't print this out today because the printer was broken. And I'm like, what's wrong with the printer? It doesn't have any paper. <laughs> That's what you say to me. That doesn't make it broken. You know that, right? It just means you waited till the last minute to print it out. Or you have 100 emails and you have to respond to them and you wait till the exact last minute. I do that all the time. It stresses me out. Do you frequently think there is only one right way to do something? And the older and older I get, I start to realize that that's just rarely, if ever, true, right? Do you frequently fail to build relaxation into every day? Or do you get up, and it's 8 in the morning, and you look at the clock, and it's 10 at night, and where did you d your day go? I've had days like that. Those are stressful days. Is that you? If that's you, give yourself a one. Do you frequently spend a lot of time complaining about the past? And listen, man, I could sit here and trade pasts with you all day. We can sit here, talk about my past and how I grew up and all the bad things that happened to me. And if you heard my story, I mean, you would think you would feel sorry for me. And when you hear Robert's story today and my wife's story, you'll feel sorry for us. But the, here's the thing, right? As much as I've talked to Robert, you're going to hear him next. Not once has he sat here and complained about his past to me. Someone said this to me, and I really liked it. The past is just that. It's past. It's past. I'll never forget the way I grew up. I'll never forget all that stuff, but I don't think about it every day. And it, therefore, I'm allowed to focus not on the future, and I want to a little bit, but I want to focus on the present. I want to live my life the six inches in front of my face. I want to live every day, man. I want to enjoy my time, and I also want to think about the future. But I want to spend, spend very little time complaining about the past. 19, do you frequently race through the day? Are you overprogrammed? I used to mentor a sorority on this campus, and they had this awesome word. Professor C, we're overprogrammed. I love that word. Yeah, just doing too much. 20, do you frequently feel unable to cope with all you have to do? So your to-do list is longer and longer and longer, right? All right, so add up your numbers. We're going to take a little poll. And you can't lie to me because I'm an ethics professor, right? So here we go. Let's do five or fewer on this one. Five or fewer, raise your hand. That's not bad, 12 people. Six to teners. All right, so the five or fewer is your A-OK. -okay. Six to teners, you're in the just breathe stage. Just breathe, you could go one of two ways, depending. 11 to 15ers, where are you? Oh, yeah, I figured in the back. Overstressed, you are overstressed. And you're above 15? And I get this all the time, and you are in the watch out. So what will happen is someone will come up to me after my speech and they'll be in tears and they'll be, Professor C, oh my God, I'm at an 18 and I'm screwed. And I look at them and I'm like, maybe. They don't want to hear that. They want me to say it'll be okay. No, it might not. Here's the deal, right? The scale only goes to 20. And if you live your life at an 18 and someone in your family gets cancer and the scale only goes to 20, what are you going to do? If you live your life at an 18 and you get into a bad car accident and the scale only goes to 20, what are you going to do? So you may be screwed. I mean, I don't know. The idea is that that's way too high. Now, if you, if you were like a one or a two right now, shame on you. You're not trying hard enough, right? Life is way harder than a one or a two. I want you to live in the five to eight range. That means you're living a significantly hard life. That's good. But you can't live 16 to 18 because something bad might happen to you and then the scale only goes to 20, right? So here's what some people tell you to do. Just go buy this kit. I'll, send it, I'll send you an email if you want one. Just put it on your desk and follow the directions. That's stupid, right? If anyone ever tells you, if anyone ever gets up on a stage and says, I'm going to tell you how to get rid of all of your stress, I think that's stupid too. I want you to run from that person. I'm not going to tell you to get rid of all of your stress. I think that that's silly. 
There are things in your life I think you should worry about. If someone in your family does have cancer, if your grades aren't as good as they should be, if you're not trying hard enough, if you have an alcohol or drug problem, listen, I think that's something you should worry about. And if someone tells you to lose all your stress, that's stupid. I'm going to tell you a different way to look at it. I want you to divide your life into two areas, right? You have your minor stressors and your major stressors. And I'm going to tell you today how to get rid of the stuff on the minor side so that you can focus on the stuff on the major side. But the way to trick me here is to say, cool, Professor C, I get it, right? But all my stuff is major. <laughs> well, if you say that to me, then I, I can't help you. Let me give you an example of some minor things that you may consider major. Many of you may have a relationship right now that you could mend by just saying you were sorry. That to me is a minor problem because say you're sorry, right? I've never seen a fight, and I've been a lawyer for a long time. I've never seen a fight where one party was 100% right and the other party was 100% wrong. Never in my life have I seen that, which means you in every fight you're in right now are partially to blame. But I don't want you to partially apologize. Hey, man, I'm 30% sorry. That's dumb, right? Just apologize and drop that baggage. If you get one bad, raise your hand if you're this kid. You get one bad grade on one test and you think your life is over. <laughs> that was me, right? That's silly. Now, if you string together 12 Ds in a row, find me, right? Find your professor. That is a major stressor. One C, one D, that's okay. That's life. I tell my students in my class, I give them 10 essays they have to write, and that's a lot. And I say, listen, you can give me a crappy essay. Give me a crappy essay, and I'll, I'll grade it, and it'll get a bad grade, but at least you turned one in. Give me one, and I won't judge you. Life's ha life happens. Give me three, and we have a problem, right? You have a bad day. You don't write your paper. Cool, man. Just, that's fine. I don't care. You do that three times, that starts to become a major problem. All right, so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you this clip, and I'm going to give you some ways to reduce your minor stress. But I want you to watch this and see if what's happening to this guy is a major or a minor stressor. you ever seen an unplugged computer monitor make a copy <laughs> in your life? B, do you think that guy got fired? C, do you think that guy was living his life at a stress level of five? <laughs> no, that guy was living at an 18, the toner's on his shirt, which isn't all that nice of a shirt anyway, and he just lost his job. We've all been there, right? You live your life at such a high level, and what happened to him was a minor stressor that he converted into a major stressor, and it cost him. All right, so today, and I have 20 minutes to do this, I'm going to give you 20 ways to decrease your minor stress. So if you have ability to take notes, do. If you have a real rabbit's book, this is in chapter 13, all right? This is the most important one. You need to be an excellent decision maker. And I'm not saying good decision maker. Understand that. I'm saying you need to learn how to be an excellent decision maker. In business, there are bad decision makers. Those people get fired, okay? That probably isn't you. I mean, it's some of you, right? Thursday, Friday, Saturday nights, you're horrible decision makers, okay? Those people get fired in real life. But then in business, there are good decision makers. Those are people that never really get promoted. They never run companies. They're good, so you can't fire them, right? They're just good enough but they're not good enough to get promoted. They don't really make any major change. They're just okay. And then in life, there are excellent decision makers. 
And those are the people that change the world, right? Those are the people that consistently make excellent decisions. And let me give you an example. It, your consequences will always follow your decisions. When you make a bad decision, bad consequences will almost always follow it. The perfect example for you is you take your midterm. You're about to take your midterm and you know you should study. But a friend comes to your room and says, hey man, let's go out, let's do this, go out. And you're like, no, I gotta study. So what does that kid always do? He comes back with reinforcements and you go, I get it, right? That happened to me in college and you don't study. But you're not mad that night. You're mad when you get your grade back. See, you're mad at the consequence of your bad decision. Had you made a better decision, you wouldn't have had that bad consequence. In life, stop focusing on your consequences and focus more on your decisions. Be an excellent decision maker. But, you know, I'm looking on Twitter last night and here's some tweets about the ethics boot camp and I took names off because whatever. But, I mean, my leader's got some really mean emails from, from some of you and I'm just thinking, I think I'm going to print these out and put them in your Daniel's admissions file. I mean, I'm just going to. I think Daniel should know about your values. But then last night I got some really nice emails from some of you and I'm also going to print those out and put them in your admission files. I hear you. I will. Because we're accepting you into this school. And if you're going to tweet this publicly, listen, you have a First Amendment right to do this. Cool. I'm all for it. I got a First Amendment right to print it because you put it publicly. Why would you do that? I guess my point to you would be, this is a bad decision, which is going to lead to bad consequences. But better to make them now than at your job. Better to make them now than in your marriage, right? All right. So that's one. Number two. You need to set priorities and have a big picture perspective. I want you to have priorities and I want you to put school fourth on your list. I want you to put human beings in the top, right? If you're religious in this room, I think that should go there. I think you should put your family, your significant other, and your friends. I think that stuff should be at the top of your list. And I think school should come fourth. Now school should not come tenth, but I don't know how you could put school ahead of people. Just the same way that I can't put my job ahead of my marriage can't. I won't. It, it's going to hurt me because I'll never get to teach at Harvard, right? Harvard's not going to hire some guy that puts his job forth. So I'm not the most popular guy around the schoolhouse because people ask me to do stuff all the time and I say no. But I'm the happiest married guy here. And I'll take that. I mean, I'll take that, right? I'd rather be the happiest married guy than the most liked by my colleagues but I had to prioritize, right? Where are your priorities? And I'm also a big picture person. Hey, it snowed yesterday. That sucked, but we made it work. I could have sat around. I could have freaked out about it. Some of you got lost, right? Some of you couldn't find your rooms. I get it, right? It wasn't, you know, it wasn't perfect, but it was a really good boot camp, don't you think, so far? And so the big picture is we did great. A little picture person would freak out about every little detail. That causes stress. Me putting my marriage forth would cause stress, so I don't do it. So go home tonight and write out your priorities on a piece of paper, right? And then make sure you see the forest through the trees of your life. Don't do too much. College is all about balance. My next book might just be called Balance. Some of you party way too much and you have no study. <laughs> Some of you study way too much and you have no fun. Neither of those things are in balance. You gotta have your life here in balance. Just enough school, just enough student groups, just enough fun, right? Just enough family. Get your life in balance and you won't be stressed. I promise you right now, the people who party four nights a week and get sent to detox and stuff, deep down inside, they're really stressed out. That's why they drink like that. You gotta find balance. If you have balance, you don't need to drink like that, but you could go out on Friday. That's cool, because you're balanced. You can go out on Saturday, too, and I don't care as long as your life isn't balanced, but if you're five nights a week hitting it hard, man, something's wrong. You shouldn't walk out of these doors a budding alcoholic. <laughs> and I think college is gonna be doomed by the amount of excessive drinking that we do. I think college in this country is gonna be doomed. Here's why I don't drink, never have. One, my dad is an alcoholic. Number two, walk through this with me. I believe that every moment is precious, do you? I also believe that I'm not guaranteed another day, don't you? And if you don't believe that, ask those people in that movie theater in Aurora, right? You don't go to a movie expecting that. So if every moment is precious and I'm not guaranteed another day, why would I spend one of those precious moments that I can't remember? I don't care about if you have a fake ID or not. I mean, it's a felony that you'll have to disclose on a job application for the rest of your life, but whatever. 
if every moment is precious, why would, wouldn't you want to remember them? Wouldn't you want to have some clarity? So don't do too much. Find balance in your life. Watch your stress level decrease when you do that. All right, don't be a perfectionist. Where am I perfectionist? Raise your hand. I'm a recovering perfectionist. I'm in recovery. I'm in AA for that, right? Let me give you a quote. You can't be perfect. Therefore, you can't demand that your friends and family be perfect. But you can damn well demand that they be good. And that's all you can ask out of the people in your life. Don't demand perfection from your girlfriend, from your boyfriend, from your parents. Just demand that they be good, right? Just demand that they be good people. We aren't perfect. Remember, we fart 14 times a day. You're, you're already not perfect, okay? So, don't, so stop trying. Don't worry about bad things that could happen, okay? So yeah, you get out of a bad relationship. Could your next one go bad? Yes. Will it? I don't know. Think about the future, but don't always worry that something bad could happen. I'll never get into law school. I'll never be able to do this. Don't say that. You might get denied, but if you don't think you can, then you can't. Next, you've got to improve your lifestyle, which is how you act when you're not in school. How much sleep do you get? How well do you eat? How much rest, right? That kind of stuff. Exercise. Your lifestyle, if it's bad right now, you'll be stressed, okay? Okay. By the way, I hope you like how that works. That took me like two hours to figure out how to do lame. You could be more flexible with your life. Like I said, I wanted to be a doctor. Then I wanted to be a lawyer, right? Then I wanted to run my own business, and now I want to be a teacher. Life kept throwing stuff at me, and for once in my life, I guess when I was at my law firm, I decided to be flexible with that. I'm a pretty stubborn person, you know? But, you, but, but when life starts throwing stuff at you, if you can be a little flexible with that... It won't be as stressful. Hey, it snowed yesterday. Same thing, right? Be flexible with that. Just go with it. I told all the leaders, you know, if there's stress, if someone in your group is no good, just roll with it. Don't focus on the bottom 10% of your group. You're never going to convince those people to give a damn about anything. Focus on the 90% who care, right? So if you're the bad member in your group right now, man, shame on you. But I told the leaders not to care about you. I want them to care about the 90% who want to be here. And therefore, my leaders aren't all that stressed out right now. Because they don't have to worry about the one kid. They can worry about the nine kids. Just be flexible with your life and watch your stress score go down. This is important. Talk to people. If you're feeling something about someone, if someone's making you mad, tell them. Don't hold it in. Especially if you're in a relationship with somebody, right? Just tell them. Hey, man, you're making me mad, and here's why. Just say it with love. Just be, be honest. Don't just hold it in because it's going to come out the wrong way. And then the second part of that is you have to listen to people when they want to talk to you. Kids come into my office, and if they ask me how I'm doing, I almost fall out of my chair. <laughs> they just come in and start talking about themselves. Well, come in and ask me how I'm doing, right? Listen to me a little bit, and I'll listen to you. So if you're going to talk to people, you have to be open when people want to talk to you. Number nine, Watch a couple sunsets. We live in the most beautiful state. And listen, I've been all over the country. This is the most beautiful place to live in the country. There are some that are tied, but nothing beats Colorado. Watch a Colorado sunset. Watch the sunset over the Rocky Mountains, right? Let's go out there and do that. And your minor problems will sort of fade away a little bit, I think. Okay, number 10, get a little more sleep. Self-explanatory. My wife will tell you, medically it's been proven that you can never make up for all the sleep that you don't get. So you can crash over the weekend so you don't get mono, but that doesn't mean you're going to make up for all the sleep you missed during the week. Watch a cartoon. She'll come home and she'll say, I just saw someone you know, died on the operating table. There was nothing I could do, and I had blood all over my scrubs and blood all over my shoes, and I had to go tell this kid's parents that their 16-year-old son is dead or whatever, and she'll come and say that, and she'll say, I need to do two things, man. I need to cry, and I need to watch America's Funniest Home Videos. <laughs> That's what she'll say. I mean, could you imagine having a job like that and not having some way to cope? I mean, if you think your life is hard right now, try her job. Try saving someone's life, and if you can't, having to tell their parents that their kid is dead. Try that. Our lives aren't all that hard, right? But figure out what you do to decompress. I love this one. I'm going to add something to this. Say and do something nice for someone else dot, 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 especially someone who can never pay you back, right? 
Go find someone who can never pay you back and do something really nice and don't do it for any other reason than it's the right thing to do. That's what Kant would say. You're learning about Kant in your classes, right? Just do it because it's right. Be good because it's right, not because you want people to like you. You're not honest because you want people to think you're honest. You're honest because it's right. You're compassionate because it's the right thing to do. You're good because that's who you are. You're just good. Where are my snorters in here? I love snorters. When she snorts, I tickle her because then she snorts more and it makes me laugh, right? We talked about laughing a lot last night and hopefully Rob did that. See, there's a reason why we bring Rob in, make you laugh. That's the whole point, right? You feel a lot better when you laugh. Where are my dog people? Where are my cat people? If your cat will come anywhere near you, pet it, man. I don't, otherwise, go find a dog. It's really hard to be stressed. We were walking back from lunch today. There was this cute little Malamute puppy. And every single person that walked by this puppy was like, hey, how you doing? Like, everyone was dead serious until they saw that dog. And all of a sudden, man, everyone was in love with this little dog, and it bit my subway bag, and it ripped it. But who cares, right? Because it was the cutest dog in the world. When you pet a dog, you're less stressed. It just happened today. We saw the same thing happen. All right. This is an important one. Take a walk. We used to walk when we were kids. Now we just drive. Not only do you drive, you text while you drive. You talk on your phone. You turn your music up as loud as you can, right? Here was the cool thing about when we were kids. We used to just walk and think about our lives. I want to encourage you to do that. I want you to take a walk and I want you to do this. I want you to cope with your reality. Who are you? And I'll sort of end on this note. We'll just do 15 of these today. Here are the questions I want you to ask yourself. Am I kind? Am I compassionate? Am I honest? Am I humble? Am I too proud? Am I loyal? Am I dependable? Am I selfish? Am I envious? Am I greedy? Am I mean? And I'll tell you something, I have that conversation with, with myself on almost a daily basis, and, and I hate the answers I get back sometimes. Because I think I got a lot of problems, man. I think I have a lot of problems. But let me tell you something, how will I ever fix my problems if I don't know that I have them? Maybe what you should do is ask your best friend to look you in the eyes and tell you your five biggest faults. And you don't hold any contempt for that person, you just start fixing them. The only way to do that is to take some time for yourself. Take a walk, right? Put everything away. Leave everything at home and just walk and think. What kind of person am I? Why is my stress level so high? What's the problem? Who am I? Every time you hear me speak, I'm going to come back to those same themes. But I'll end with this because I want to bring them up. If you live a stress-filled life, if you live your life at a 15, 16, and higher, the last thing you care about is being a good person. You can't because your life is so stressful that all you're worrying about is getting through to the next day. Have you ever been there? And so the last thing you care about, man, okay, Professor C, whatever, man, I'm gonna, I believe you, but I'm gonna wait till I'm less stressed. The problem is that time never comes. We're always busy. We're always overprogrammed. Therefore, we don't have time to care about being good. So what I want to tell you right now is I want you to take not all of these at once, but I want you to take a couple a week, one or two of them a week, and just start to get better. And over the course of a couple months, maybe your score's down to an eight. And now maybe you can go volunteer at the inner city school down the street. Right? Now maybe you could tutor some kid. Now maybe you can call your parents more. Now maybe you can plug back in with your family. The idea is to get your score down so that therefore you can start being good. This is real. This whole boot camp is real. I hope you understand that. We're not kissing your butt. You know that, right? We're just sitting here and shooting you real. The biggest compliment anyone could ever give me is, Professor C, thanks for not kissing my ass. Professor C, thanks for telling me the truth. Fine. You may hate me, but I'm telling you the truth. I want you to understand the spirit from which I speak. And the spirit from which I speak is, is compassion and caring for you. And that's all it is. Yeah, I'm making you be here on a Saturday. Do you think I don't know that? <laughs> Do you think I don't understand what this is doing to your life? Don't treat me like I'm dumb. I know I've decided to take one for the team. <laughs> Team America, right? The point is, we got to fix this country. We need your stress level down so you can start chasing the things that are right. Okay, I'm done. Thank you.